Days, of course, she is one of America's foremost actors, your very good friend, Naomi Watts. Aww. Hi, Deb. Sorry I can't be there tonight. I wish I could be, but I'm still here in Thailand filming. Um, but I'm just sending you so many great wishes and I hope you have a really fantastic night. I've loved and admired you for so many years now um, and we seem to share so much, you know. I'm, I mean, we're both actresses, um, we both live in New York, we've both got two kids, we've both got blonde hair, um, the list goes on. Um, oh, and yeah, of course, we... Uh, we both have hairy mutant husbands. <laughs> Hi, Deb. <laughs> Can't really talk if my teeth might come out. I hope you have a great night, and uh, we miss you. We love you. It's the night the night the stars come out to play, and you're invited. Nothing compares to this, does it? It's going to be a spicy event tonight. Ride the red carpet and experience the glamour, the anticipation, the excitement, <laughs> as cinema superstars come together for the party of the year. I have a feeling I'm going to get roasted in some way. James Franco and Anne Hathaway host Hollywood spectacular Night of Nights. What a lovely beginning to the year. The Oscars, tonight, 9.40 on Channel 9. At McDonald's. Welcome back to This Is Your Life as we reflect on the extraordinary career of one of Australia's leading ladies. Deborah Lee, back in 1985, your acting career is in full steam before it comes literally to a screaming halt when you are seriously injured in a car accident. When ambulance crews arrive, they are amazed to see that you are alive. You sustain multiple broken bones, severe lacerations, and at one stage, the doctors fear you may lose your foot. At that stage, lying in that hospital, how did you feel? What were you thinking? Did you think acting gone forever? Oh, yeah. No, I did. I thought, that's it. Because my face was all cut up and my hair was out here. And it was um, a casting woman in Sydney, Susie Maisels, who had this script, Shame, and said, I really think you, you, you're right for this. And she really pushed me, and it was her pushing me for, to go in for this audition. And I read the script, and I loved it. And I got the part. Ah, shit. Oh. Oh. Ah. Ah. So the person you mentioned there, somebody who is dear to your heart, the person who inspired you to get out of your hospital bed and start back into acting is Susie Maisels. And also alongside her tonight is one of your co-stars, Simone Buchanan. Oh Susie, if I can ask you, first off, what a seminal moment it was for you, for, for Deborah Lee, yes. in that hospital. Why did you cast it? Well, Deborah Lee has always had this fantastic voice that says, I'm here, I exist, and this wonderful presence, and sort of so intelligent when she approaches a role. And it was almost as if the writer had written it for Debbie. He was channeling you, you know? He was just getting you all along and she never once loses her femininity. Simone, as a young actress working alongside Deb in this movie, what was it like? I remember one particular scene, you, oh God, um, where we were rehearsing and my character had to be particularly upset at the very start of the scene and we were discussing it and thinking, okay, what are we going to do? And um, we were about to go for a take and unbeknownst to me, Deb and Steve Jodwell, our wonderful director, had gone aside and had this little discussion and decided that just before action, Deb would slap me across the face. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, an action, whack. And so I was shocked and, and it was brilliant because because we had the reaction that we needed for the scene. And well, let's have a look at that scene right now. Smile. He thinks he's got you right. Lift your knee up right into his balls. Do you understand? That's going to hurt him badly. And your hands, Lizzie, these little hands, you can do a lot with them. Just dig in here in the windpipe and just pull hard. All right? 
All right, just go for the eyes. Just go for the eyes. It's the eyes. You heard me. I didn't bring her up for this. Do you think I like it? Susan Salon, thank you so much for being part of our show tonight. And great to see Deborah Lee again. Thank you, guys. Have a wonderful night. Thank you. Cheers a drink after. All right, then. From the serious social issues addressed in Shame, your versatility as an actress then lands you the role in the comedy drama A Matter of Convenience. Here's a very romantic scene with your on screen boyfriend, Joe. Better known as John Clark. Ah. Do you love me? Of course I love you. Say it. Jesus, fellow, why should I have to say it? It sounds pathetic. Just say it. I love you, Velma. I'm doing this because I love you. <laughs> I put them on. Whoop. Sorry about that, Deb. I apologise for my behaviour in the middle 1980s. Although it was a great pleasure to do a romantic Being comedy with you. It was so good for me. I've never done it since with anybody else. I'm completely faithful and I remember it very fondly. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful night tonight and if things don't work out with you, I'm only a phone call away or you can Google me under Lothario, as well you know. In 1988, your Aussie film Shame is released in the United States to rave reviews. Huge billboards spring up everywhere, including the famous Times Square in New York, as Deb hits the big time. Now American casting agents and producers are flooding you with scripts and movie offers. Over the next few years, you are working with some of the biggest names in the film industry. In Act of Betrayal, you play a no-nonsense Australian woman alongside Elliot Gould. You then are given the role of Brian Dennehy's wife in the film Last of the Finest. Things got very steamy between you and Sam Shepard in Voyager before the lavish Disney production Newsies featuring a young up-and-coming actor by the name of Christian Bale. This is great. I mean, that was a fun when, as Sigga said, we were all over there. We were all, you know, I was still doing films back in Australia, so I was sort of going between the two countries and, you know, everyone was working and partying and working and partying. And it was a great time. What was it like working with your good buddy Peter Phelps? Oh, always fun. Always interesting. It was great. Always fun, always interesting yeah, when he... Peter Phelps is around. Yeah. Peter Phelps is oh. in the house, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> But uh, you knew Deborah Lee for 10 years before you worked together. You've known her for a long, long time. Tell us a bit about her. We, uh, we talked about working together. Um, we'd, sit, we'd had mutual agents. We saw each other in LA and in between and Sydney, Melbourne, wherever. And as actors do, we fantasised about roles and said, well, who will get to, together to do this uh, project and whatever. It almost happened on uh, a, a project in Sydney. We were shooting in Melbourne. Um, <clears throat> the title role that Deborah Lee was already uh, cast in, in Corelli, and I was, it was between me and another bloke. And um, the other bloke got the job, and I've got to say... <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've got to say... It we was, could have been married. Yeah, I, no, 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 no. It was the only time that I've ever, ever really liked losing a role, because uh. look what happened. Um, whenever you saw Deborah Lee's name on a call sheet or on a schedule, you'd go, oh, you know, this day's going to be good. And there's no one that I know that doesn't want to be with Deborah Lee. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Thanks, Pete. No worries. Yeah. Good on you, buddy. Yeah. Thanks, Pete. Thank you. Peter Phelps, everyone. Give him a big yeah. round of applause. That was so nice. Deb Coming up, Deborah Lee Finesse meets the man of her dreams. And to take us to the break, here's another big fan of yours, Deb, Jacqueline McKenzie. Mm. Deborah Lee, I wish so much I could be there with you tonight. What an amazing time. I bet you're having an absolute ball. Men love Deborah Lee. The flowers that arrive in... I mean, I was working in the desert, which is Coobapedi. It's very hard to get fresh-cut flowers in Coobapedi, but by God, they used to come in by the truckload, going straight up the stairs into her trailer. <laughs> and she wouldn't lead anyone on at all. It's not like she was leading people on. She's just genuinely a very beautiful person that you want to either be or be around. An Australian. Welcome back. We hope you're enjoying the life and times of Deborah Lee Furness. 
Deb, but throughout the journey you have shared with us tonight, it's clear that you've never been afraid to bend the rules of life. Would you mind sharing with us your New Year's resolution yeah. from 1995? I remember it well. I thought, I'm never dating another actor and definitely no one under 30. <laughs> Thankfully, like most New Year's Eve's resolutions, they're quickly forgotten. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me the greatest of pleasure to welcome... I think it was worth giving up this New Year's resolution for this bloke. What do you <laughs> I think? think so. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Deborah Lee's husband, Hugh Jackman. <laughs> Take a seat, guys. Oh, I like that. Take a seat. Uh, Deborah Lee, can I say that uh, not only in this incarnation of This Is Your Life, but our producers have worked on many of them in the past, there has been no more enthusiastic partner than this man in doing the stitch-up of you tonight. <laughs> and I thought it was fantastic that uh, after Deborah Lee belted Hugh that he went to such great trouble <laughs> to cover the eye up that she's just, just hooked him. By the way, let's roll the tape. Uh, this, oh, I can't watch it. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, Have dear. a look at there this. You're picking up speed here, Hugh. Uh, uh, and about this stage, ew, yep. I thought, there goes our show. <laughs> <laughs> Deb, tell us about the first time you met. First time I met yeah. you? Uh, <laughs> have you uh, um, <laughs> and you can't lie, because we've got it all here. <laughs> now, the first time, it was, we were, he was cast in a show. I'm like, who is this guy? You know, Jack Human, who I've never heard of him. <laughs> And I could never get his name right. And then, well, you should tell the story because it had more of an impact. Yeah, I was, it was my very first job. So I was pretty nervous. And I knew of Deb, of course. She was very famous. And uh, they said, you know, the second AD is going to come and pick you up. So I come out, and there's Deborah Lee sitting in the front seat. And I didn't realise that, and I didn't know I was going to meet her. And the first thought was like, I love that she sits in the front seat, you know, because I knew she'd been in America. And I thought maybe she was going to be a bit of a diva. I didn't know what was going on. So I get in the back seat and I sort of, you know, good boy, put it on my seatbelt. I go, hi, Deb. And she immediately takes her seatbelt off and she gets up on the seat like this and she takes the sunglasses off. She goes, hi, I'm Deborah Lee. Like that. <laughs> and I said, immediately I thought, I like this woman. Well, <laughs> it was on that set of the ABC television series Corelli in 1995 that sparks flew in front of the cameras. Just to set up the following scene, Deborah Lee is the hard-headed clinical psychologist in a men's prison. And Hugh, you naughty boy here, is an <laughs> inmate doing time for armed robbery. Look, I watch you every morning when you come into this yard. Your eyes searching, I'm the first person that you look for. And I see the warmth behind that, that tight little smile. When I look at that, all I kept thinking is it could have been Phelpsy. <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking that too, mate? Yep. <laughs> or, Hugh, it could have been Mick Jagger. Ooh, because Mick yes. Jagger yes. at uh, that stage was a bit keen and was doing a bit of door knocking. So I... It was about two months into the shoot and uh, fair to say I had a massive crush on Deb. So did half the crew. And, uh, and I remember being very embarrassed. My first job, what a cliche, I fall in love with my leading lady. And uh, so I didn't talk to Deb for a week at all, except unless it was scripted, I did not talk to her. And then uh, I finally I thought, oh, this is, this is a little much. So I, uh, I said, I'm going to have a dinner party. I'll invite Deb and 12 other people. So we're having this dinner party. Deb's sitting there, and it's right at the beginning. She's got her cell phone, uh, mobile phone, right there on the table, as Deb always does. And it rings. And conversation stops, right? So we're all listening to Deb's <laughs> phone call. She's like, what?